Thank you very much for this great introduction. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I am Yezan Zaman, and I'm delighted to welcome everyone to the Industry 4.0 Climate and Youth Session. Climate change adaptation mitigation Industry 4.0 and youth inclusion are three of the most important trends that we need to address in this era of digital transformation. Studies show that Industry 4.0 or the fourth industrial revolution is well placed to address the interconnected economic, environmental and social challenges faced by our society from climate change mitigation to promoting sustainable economic growth. The integration of these trends could bring several advantages from, for the global manufacturing industry from promoting sustainable development, creating new jobs, to helping achieve the objectives of Paris Agreement and net zero by 2050. During this session, we are delighted to welcome Franco Atasi. Franco is the CEO of Smart Infrastructure in the Middle East at Siemens, and he has held a variety of senior positions at Siemens during his 27 years career. He has a vision of making infrastructure around us smarter and more energy efficient by combining technologies such as artificial intelligence and cybersecurity. Thank you very much for joining us today. We are delighted to have you. Thank you, Yazan. I appreciate the opportunity. Glad to be here. Thank you very much. Thank you. When looking from a perspective of a large multinational corporation like Siemens, what are the current gaps when it comes to the intersection of the three main trends, climate change, Industry 4.0, and youth inclusion? Uh, thank you. Uh, let me just preface the, uh, that with, with just an overview of what Siemens does, and then it would enable us to probably uh, answer this particular uh, point and other points uh, more properly, at least from my end. Um, yes, and Siemens is, is the, it, we create technology with purpose, meaning we don't create technology and hoping somebody would use it. We actually create technology that enables uh, uh, customers, countries, cities, uh, governments, etc., achieve their their uh, aspiration and targets and goals. Uh, especially here, like an example in 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 the Middle East, whether it's UAE, Egypt, Saudi Arabia, etc. Uh, digitalization is transforming the backbone of economies in the Middle East, uh, in industry, in infrastructure, and 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 so on. The pandemic actually had accelerated this trend. Um, us being a leading technology company, we're equipped to combine the real world and the digital worlds together. And we've become partners uh, with multiple entities, governments, private uh, sectors, uh, verticals, industries, et cetera, to enable them to do so. Last decade was about connecting consumers. This decade is about digital transformation. So it's key for us to understand how that's impacted. Um, there's three, three drivers for the transformation. There is the fast technology changes, there is the digitalization and the need for sustainability. Uh, how countries can transform their economies, uh, there's really three main levers as well. Technology, as we mentioned, that enables them. People, and I think we will be talking about that as being part of that gap. Uh, technology alone is not enough. We need to have smart, dedicated uh, people to enable us. Uh, to, to achieve the targets, and also partnerships. We all know that no company, no country, no organization can do it alone. Um, so therefore, coming back to your question, climate change adaption and mitigation and industry, the fourth industrial revolution, industry 4.0, go hand in hand. There's more companies and industries right now and nations actually adopting digital technology, as you mentioned, whether it's an internet of things, IoT, artificial intelligence, and this will narrow the gap between the economic growth and the environmental impact. We, what we see, we see abundant proof that this works. Uh, as an example, Siemens, with our digital technologies, we conserve natural resources, energy and water. We flatten the curve while improving efficiencies of buildings and economies. Uh, so as for the youth inclusion, 
this is the third element, as you mentioned, in, in the current gaps. Young people with limited skills will focus and single track careers will be at risk of losing out amid the rapid changes in Industry 4.0 and the global warming. Uh, but we certainly believe that young, uh, the younger generation is naturally more flexible, let's say, than the older generation. And with an adequate training and opportunities, they will play a huge role in that. Digital inclusion is a challenge, uh, just to, to, to throw that in. Uh, uh, there's roughly 2 billion people that may not be able or don't use the internet. And this suggests that many countries, especially the poorer ones, could be left out further behind the fourth industrial revolution. And this is a dangerous gap. Narrowing it will require global commitment and investment. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Franco, for providing insights on what Siemens is currently doing and how they're implement implementing technologies in order to help re reduce the gap between uh, the three main trends. Now, we also see that a lot of corporations have a clear vision to address climate change or to enhance business growth. But we also see that there is a challenge uh, when trying to implement those two goals. So how do large corporations like Siemens mitigate climate change while also delivering a business growth at the same time? Yes, uh, great question. Um, Siemens, we do this every day, especially with smart infrastructure business. Uh, smart infrastructure is all about the intersection of climate change adoption, mitigation, and industry, 4.0. Okay, so combining all those challenges together. The smart technology is designed to conserve natural resources, energy and water while improving efficiencies of buildings, uh, cities, and economies. How do we do that? Basically, our smart infrastructure or smart innovation uh, technology, it, it, we collect data and we analyze this data and then we develop uh, strategies to better use our assets and therefore use them more efficiently, therefore eliminating waste, uh, unnecessary use for, for energy and utilities, therefore coming back to the climate change uh, 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 perspective. Uh, we deliver business growth through combating climate change. As an example, you know, what we have done or what the country of UAE has, has, uh, has uh, uh, showed in within Expo 2020 in Dubai. Uh, in there, we have developed a blueprint for a smart, sustainable city. And uh, this is a city that's going to be uh, the Expo 2020 is a city that will have 25 million people visit them within six months period. So it will have the challenges of any big metropolitan city uh, in a short time, in a short period. The technologies in there that was adopted by combining and, and connecting 137, 130 buildings together all in the effort of making sure that people are comfortable, all in the effort is making sure that we utilize and use energy in a, in a proper way, in a responsible way, and also uh, resources like water while we maintain um, that in a, in, a, in a very fast, uh, I mean, a very secure and, and safe uh, uh, environment there. So uh, what, is, what are we doing there? We're making their operations very efficient uh, therefore, they, they, it enables them to, 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 uh, expand, to, to, to reduction of, of cost and expenditure. Um, I can't speak for what other companies are doing, but Siemens is, is, is a, it has a track record that shows how that's possible. We are actually practicing what we are preaching as an organization. We do have a target by 2030 by being uh, net zero. Uh, and, and what is that? Siemens operates and owns a lot of facilities all over the world, factories, buildings, and so on and so forth. So we're implementing measures uh, to mitigate climate change. And with that measure and all these expenses and making our operations more efficient, we're actually enabling to reduce our costs and therefore uh, uh, deliver the, the growth that, that we are expected to do in a simultaneous way. 
Thank you. Thank you, Franco, for also um, addressing how Siemens is achieving economic growth by mitigating climate change. And this reflects how sustainability is a core value for Siemens. Now, it's also important to address um, employment. So the fourth industrial revolution is expected to change millions of jobs due to the digitalization. And this unfortunately may lead to unemployment uh, for the youth, especially as the manufacturing industry accounts for 70 percent of the global economy. So how do we prepare the youth um, for the industry 4.0 transformation and enable the next generation of future makers, particularly as we acknowledge the emerging countries may not have the immunity for the significant automation of the economy? Thank you. Um, as I mentioned earlier, Yazan, you know, there's three main levers of how countries can transform their economies. One is technology and it's a game changer and we address that and how it enables uh, 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 countries and economies and, and private and so on to, to achieve certain, to, 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 to help them achieve their aspiration. But people is the main lever here as well. Uh, as I mentioned, technology is not enough, alone is not enough. Uh, without brave and smart people, there will be neither innovation nor progress. Uh, only people can turn this ambition into reality, okay? In this, education is the single best, the single biggest lever uh, uh, for change and prosperity. It's about empowering people. It's about educating people. It's about uh, on these matters and, and empowering them to take matters into their own hands, realizing their full potential. So in this case here, public and private sectors uh, should address this challenge partly by working together to enhance the academic programs in schools and universities to improve knowledge in industry 4.0. So academia and industry coming together and developing programs to enable our youth to be prepared and, 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 and empowered to take on matters and be part of this journey. Um, we should uh, push, uh, the, again, the, the public and private sectors and academia uh, hard uh, for skills training that will equip the young people to find future solutions in a world that is disrupted increasingly by technology and the, crime, the climate crisis. So whether it's vocational, whether it's internships, whether it's apprenticeships uh, and so on, programs, as Siemens have programs for new graduates that we enable them to, to, enable them to, uh, to train on, on the digital technologies, on the new trends and how to combat climate change and industry 4.0. So tech companies and others need to ramp up their internship offerings by all means. Uh, we're very active, like I said, in the internships uh, and opportunities for youth. Uh, and, and, and this is how we believe we can get the youth to be very much involved uh, in industry 4.0 transformation and the environmental and digital transformation sustainability as we see it uh, coming for sure in the future, as it, is, it, it exists right now, it will be more amplified as we move forward in the decades to come. Thank you again uh, for this wonderful insight. Of course, collaboration is the key between the different entities, governmental and private, to help increase the involvement of the youth and to help them shift smoothly into the new digital world. Right. Um, we thank you very much Franco Atasi for your wonderful, insightful discussion. I personally really enjoyed it and I got to learn a lot about Siemens. So really appreciate having you with us today. Thank you. Thank you very well, much. Thank, thank you for the opportunity as an, and, uh, and uh, look forward to, uh, to meeting you in person. And uh, you know, uh, I think you've volunteered to become a teacher assistant uh, at Siemens in the UAE here. So I look forward to, uh, to, to more interaction with you. Yes, of course. I look forward to that as well. And I'm actually getting involved in Siemens in different ways. Um, and that's why I find it to be as a leader in the energy sector for me and also for my colleagues and for all the youth around the globe. So thank you very much. It really is, is, is an honor and it's a privilege to, to, uh, to, to see people, young people like you with that level of aspiration and commitment. Thank you again. Thank you. Thank you very much.